Hello guys, I think we are on, um, we are on air now, we are live. We are going to do a session on uh, geometry. We have already covered one section on uh, geometry, one session on geometry, where we have done the very basic simple ideas on uh, triangles. And on, on, so give me a second, I'm gonna, it's already something is playing, I am going to close that. So we have already done one session on geometry, where we have done very basics with uh, triangles, angles, some of three angles being 180, some of any two sides being greater than the third side. Uh, some broad definitions and ideas there. So I'm going to build on that. So I'm going to go on, jump into congruence and similarity, and then think about uh, triangles with different triangle properties with ortho center, circumcenter, in center. We discuss all of that. And so we're going to do a few questions, but this is going to be uh, uh, more theory and less of uh, less less fewer questions. I'm going to do more from the basics, but the bit on ortho center, in center, circumcenter, or this is. Uh, this is actually wonderful and tough. So if you have not done that basics, then I would urge you to hang in there and, and listen to the whole thing. And so, and uh, those of you who are Argentina fans, my commiserations are with you. Uh, I was willing them on, didn't work. Life goes on. France played brilliantly. They were freakishly good. So it was a wonderful uh, match to watch. I'm a, I became a gigantic fan of uh, Kylian Mbappe. Wonderful player. So they dismantled them. So good game. So it's all right. So those of you who are rooting for Argentina, like for so. Right? Super guys. Enough of uh, uh, an intro and a chat about the World Cup. Let's jump in. I'm going to share the screen, and then we'll go right ahead into the slides. Okay. I hope you can see the screen now. If you have an issue, ping us in some format, some forum, and we'll be able to help you out there. Congruent triangles. What do you mean by saying congruent triangles? And so it's a wonderful term. Congruent means identical. And so two triangles are said to be congruent if they are identical. What do I mean by identical? One is an exact replica of the other. And this is a symbol for congruence. So what we mean by congruence is every side metric of this triangle will match with the corresponding side metric of this triangle. Every angle metric of triangle one will match with an angle metric of triangle two. So if you're saying these two triangles are congruent, these two will have same area, same perimeter, same in radius, same lengths of medians, same circum radius, everything. Everything you can imagine for this, the corresponding metric for that will be equal. And what you can imagine for one, the corresponding one for the other will be equal. And so it's very vital to know what is meant by congruence. So once you establish congruence, everything else is built in after that. How do you establish congruence? There are four methods and four methods only. Remember that? First one is called the SSS rule, which is side, side, side rule. So if you have one triangle and one more triangle, if these two sides are equal, these two sides are equal, these two sides are equal, then the two triangles are congruent. And so if three sides of one triangle are equal to three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Once you establish congruence, every other extrapolation is built in. Remember that everything will be identical between the two triangles. And so side, side, side rule. Next rule is ASA rule, angle, side, angle. So angle here, angle here, and side in between. If this is true across two triangles, so these two, this angle is equal to this, this angle is equal to this, on the side in between is equal, then the two triangles will be congruent. If they are congruent, then the third angle will be equal. Then the, the, the other two sides will be equal, areas will be equal, perimeters will be equal, in radii, circum radius, everything will be equal. Every corresponding metric will be equal fine, between the two triangles. That is important. Now, remember, this is ASA. Fine. We'll revisit this. Why it is ASA? It is not two angles and one side, it is ASA, angle, side, angle. Right? This is SAS, so side, angle, side. So if you have two triangles where two sides are equal and the angle in between is equal, it's very vital to remember that this angle is called the included angle or the angle in between. If these two sides are equal correspondingly and the angle in between is equal, then the triangles are congruent. So it is the included angle that should be equal. Remember that this is relevant for ASA also. 
here also the site should be the included side but here it's less of an issue because if you have a triangle where two angles are equal to two angles of another triangle the third angle will also be equal so if it were not asa but aas it would still be good because if two angles of a triangle are equal to two angles of another triangle the third angle will also be equal and so here it doesn't matter that much but here it does it cannot be two sides and one angle then the triangles may or may not be congruent and so two sides will be equal in two triangles and the angle in between will be equal only then they'll be congruent the last rule is rhs which is a right angle hypotenuse and side if you have two triangles both right angled and hypotenuse are equal and one side is equal then the two triangles will be congruent it looks like it is side side angle but because it's a right angle triangle we can plug the rhs rule right angle hypotenuse side if there are two right angle triangles and the hypotenuse and side of one triangle are equal to hypotenuse and side of the second one then they will be congruent remember once you establish congruence that means both triangles are identical they have the same shape same size every side metric will be equal every angle metric will be equal perimeter area interior everything will be identical from one triangle to another but move on to the next idea this is with similarity two triangles are said to be similar if they have the same shape remember they need not have the same size so you could have a triangle like this and a triangle like this so this could be 4 5 6 this could be 8 10 12 effectively this is a larger version of this triangle then the two triangles are said to be similar they need not have the same shape the same size they have the same shape right? now if two triangles are similar what do we mean by that this means every side metric will be in the same proportion what do i mean by that 4 into 2 is 8 5 into 2 is 10 6 into 2 is 12 if we drew an altitude and that happened to be 3.2 i'm not saying it is i don't know what the altitude will be for that triangle then this will be 6.4 every aspect of this triangle is twice of the corresponding side metric of this triangle every side metric will be in proportion every angle metric will be equal so was this angle were 61 degrees this will be 61 degrees angles cannot be in proportion when angles determine the shape and angles add up to 180 degrees angles of one triangle cannot suddenly be twice angles of another triangle the sum will go to 360 so when you are saying same shape what we mean by that is that all angle metrics are identical size metrics are in proportion so the ratio of the sides will be same no matter what set of sides you take so ab and pq they are in one ratio then bc and qr will be in the same ratio that's what we we mean when we say similar triangles when so now how do we establish similarity at three rules one is a side 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 rule if three sides of one triangle are in the same ratio as three sides of another triangle 4 5 6 8 10 12 then they are similar once they are similar then you can make every extrapolation from there every angle metric will be equal every side metric will be in proportion right? next rule is the aaa rule angles are in proportion if three angles of one triangle are equal to three angles of another triangle then they'll be similar remember this is not even aaa rule this is just aa rule if two angles of a triangle are equal to two angles of another triangle then they're similar why because the third angle will also be equal if the angles are equal then the shapes are same two triangles have the same shape that's what we mean when we say similar triangle the sas rule this is the two triangles which have sides in the same ratio 8 is to 10 4 is to 5 and the included angle being equal then they'll be similar the sides should be in proportion in the same proportion the angle in between should be equal then they are similar now if two triangles are similar what do you mean by that every side metric will be in the same proportion every angle metric will be equal important to know that very vital to know that okay? now if you have established 
similarity what can be inferred from that it's very vital it's called the similarity equation suppose these two triangles are similar triangle a b c similar to triangle d e f what will be the starting step we'll say the sides are in the same ratio or we'll say a b by d e is equal to b c by e f is equal to a c by d f the sides are in the same ratio so this is called the similarity equation frequently we'll be using this starting point and so what is one very important idea to keep in mind whenever you're dealing with similarity or congruence for that matter match vertices what do i mean by that say triangle abc is similar to triangle def don't say abc and fed are similar a goes with d b goes with e c goes with f match the vertices whatever be it, be the triangles similar or congruent make sure you establish congruence and you establish congruence in the right orientation abc is similar to def or pqr is congruent to xyz make sure you make it a point to say def if it is indeed def match vertices because a lot of similarity equations become mechanical if you match vertices and they become very tricky if they are not in the same ratio then you are not able to write down the ratio directly but it's very vital to get the orientation right if you're saying two triangles are similar you have to say why they are similar which is aa or sss or sas and then you make it a point to know how they are similar abc is similar to def remember that there are a bunch of questions ideas on congruence and similarity try this one give this question a go It's a very simple question, very straightforward question and wonderful question, but very simple one. And QA is perpendicular to AB, PB is perpendicular to AB, AO is 12, BO is 8, PB is 6. What do we know here? We know that this is a right angle here. We know this is a right angle. If you take this triangle, POB and AOQ, both are right angled. These two are vertically opposite angles, they're equal. So the two triangles have two angles equal, so they are similar. Now, triangle AOQ, similar to triangle, think about it, should it be BOP, BPO, POB, PBO, OBP, what orientation should it be? A is the right angle, it goes with B the right angle, O goes with O, and then P. Why are they similar? They are similar because of AA similarity. Just saying two triangles are similar, you've got to say why they are similar and make sure you write down how they are similar. Now, what do we do? We say AO by BO equals OQ by OP equals AQ by BP. 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3. AO by BO is 12 by 8. OQ by OP, we don't care about. AQ by BP. So AQ is what we need to find out. BP is 6. This is just 3 by 2. 3 by 2 times 6 or AQ is 9 centimeters. And very regular question. Obviously, your question will not be as simple as this. Good question, but, but, but simple. Too simple for a cat. Let's do one more. AO by BO, sorry, AO by OC equals BO by OD equal to 1 by 2. AB is 5 centimeters, find DC.
A O by O C equals B O by O D equal to 1 by 2. A B is 5 centimeters. Find D C. A O by O C or this were X. This is 2X. B O by O D is 1 by 2. This were Y. This is 2Y. Okay. Think about this. There are two triangles here. A O B and C O D. The ratio of sides. <coughs> Excuse me. And the ratio of sides here is x is to y. Here also it is x is to y. Right? So this is the sides, two sides are in proportion. The angle in between this angle and this angle, the angles in between, these two are equal, vertically opposite angles are triangle AOB and COD are similar. They are similar because of SAS. This is Y and 2Y, X and 2X. Angle in between is equal. Just split the two triangles to make it clearly visible. Sides are in proportion. Angle in between included angle is equal. So they are similar. What orientation are these similar? Triangle AOB is similar to, we know O is in the middle. That much is clear. That's a vertically opposite angle. A will go with C or D. It is A O by O C, B O by O D. They've handed it to us on a platter. A goes with C, B goes with D. Because of S A S, these two triangles are similar. Or A O by C O equals O B by O D equals A B by C D. A O C O, O B O D, A B C D. A O by C O equal to O B by O D. This is equal to 1 by 2. 1 by 2 equals AB by CD. AB is 5. CD should be 10. Or DC is 10 centimeters long. Couple of simple questions on similarity. Nice, wonderful. We've got our heads wrapped around this. Now go for this one. A properly tough question. Give it a go. There's a kind of question you're likely to see in the exam. It's probably too tough even for CAT. But it's a wonderful question to try. So I'm going to give you some amount of time to try and crack it. So take the time and then try to go, give it a go. I'm not going to rush through this. So take your time. This is the kind of question that you should back yourself to crack. Very vital. Even if it takes time, you probably will not get a question like this in the exam because it's too time consuming. But it is good to try. There's a lot of learning sitting inside this question. So get that learning. Very vital. A, B, C, D is a rectangle such that B, E is 20 units. What is the area of triangle F, A, D? So, D, C is 100, B, C is 72, B, E is 20. I'm going to mark out numbers. So, here, this is 20, A, D is 72, A, E is 80. We need to find area of triangle FAD. Or if you draw this perpendicular, if you find FP, we are through. It's the most intuitive, direct way of approaching this. If you find that, we are through. The rectangle, so this is 90 degrees. All angles are in the vertices are 90. Give it a go. I've just given a very broad outline as to how to go about it. It's a tough question, it's going to take time to solve. You're going to find try multiple approaches to get it right. So I don't want to rush through to the solution. Try this, we'll get it right. This is the toughest part for me, waiting. Right, so I just want to take a question, try to solve it or try to explain it. But now I, I know that I have to give you guys time to give this a go. One of the reasons I love the, the product version of online courses is just the waiting time is zero. Effectively, you look at the solution when you are ready. And so I don't need to say, okay, you're all seeing, you're all seeing the question for the first time now. So probably take four or five minutes, try this out. 
the product is already there. These questions are already available. They're available as questions, which you then try. And then you see the whole thing and then you say, look, I've done this. I, I think I've even gotten the answer right. But now let me see the solution to see if there's a better method, juicier method, something insightful sitting there. So there's no waiting time. Right? So there's an online product where, where a bunch of things are put on an, on an LMS. LMS, basically learning management solution. And so the, the live class thing has uh, too much waiting time for my comfort. Why? Because a bunch of you are, are going to solve this in three, four minutes, get nearly to the answer point, and then wait for a minute or two for, for me to start explaining the answer. The rest, you'll be so close to getting it right that you'll just say, look, I, another three minutes, I want to try this. Another five minutes, I want to try many different approaches. But by the time, I've already gone on to the solution. So it messes up the learning speed both ways. And so I know you can always put pause and, and continue this later on, but that doesn't happen. I, for football matches, I've tried recording them and watching them 15 minutes later so that I can bypass the, the halftime nonsense chatter. Doesn't work. That's the same, the, 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 the same feel for the match is not there. Live action is brilliant. This recorded and fast forwarded thing just becomes, it feels mechanized. Uh, Anyway, which is why I'm a gigantic fan of, of an online product where everything is available there. If you, have, if you have a doubt, you ask a doubt. But otherwise, you're learning at your own pace. You basically say, look, I've seen this question. Let me try this. I'm on good form today. Everything seems to be just working for me. Oh, I've got this answer in three minutes. Let me see the solution. You see a couple of steps and you see that the professor is doing exactly the way you did it. Shut the video up. Go to the next question. Or you feel like, look, I'm not going to get it right, but I'm going to try for 10 more minutes before I see the solution. Both ends of pace setting, you, you should have freedom over. Uh, so, and, and that, that disappears in this, in, in, the, in the night class, evening class at a set time, that framework. So, this, this whole class geometry one is there online. It's there on, online in online.2im.com for free. So you don't have to pay a penny. Uh, go through that because our, our guys, learnest, who's our tech provider, and done a fantastic job of putting together a learning management solution. Wonderful place to just learn this thing. So you see the question, you try for a few minutes, see the first 40 seconds of the video, you know where it is going, skip it, go to the next one, and then, and then try that. I think that's how we should learn. Right. Anyway, enough of that. Now we need to want, we want to get this FP, this altitude. That means some way. If you can somehow get this FQ, we know that PQ is 100. We get this, we know this. If we can find something linking FP and FQ, we are through. Totally they add up to 100, we know one, we know the other, we can find. But this FEBC, this is a weird quadrilateral. There is something missing here. We, we are probably not going to be able to link FP and FQ. Think about how else we can find area of triangle FAD. Right? This FAD is a triangle, FDC is a triangle, AFE is a triangle. This is a weird shape. So we want to find this area. See if we can find some other area and then add, subtract, manipulate in some form to find this area. Let's see how we can do this. We've drawn that diagram. We know that this angle is equal to this angle. Alternate interior angles. We know that this angle is equal to this angle. Again, alternate interior angles. So these two triangles, AEF and CFD, are similar. Wonderful. So AEF is similar to triangle CFD because of AA similarity. These two angles are equal, these two angles are equal, or AE by C, CF. AE by CF equals EF by CD. EF by FD equals AF. AEF, I've written the, the, the orientation wrong. So after preaching so much, I've gotten it wrong. 
we'll write again a f e is similar to triangle c f d a f by c f equals a e by c d equals f e by f d the only part of interest to us is a e by c d a e is 80 c d is 100 or every side metric between these two triangles will be in the ratio 80 is to 100 or 4 is to 5 or if you draw fm this measures 4x fn this will measure 5x now fm plus fn is 72 or 9 times x is 72 x is 8 this is 4x which is 32 this is 5x which is 40. Wonderful. Right? So now, now what do we do with this? Now comes the trickier part, the wonderful part, where we say we have found this is 40 and this is 32. So we can find area of triangle FCD. How much is this area? This is half into 100 into 40. We want to find area of triangle AFD. We can find this. If we subtract this from ADC, we are through. So area of triangle ADC area is half into 72 into 100. Half into base into height. Or 36 into 100, 3600. From this, if we subtract this 2000, the remaining, we've got this, this is 1600. What we are saying, we are saying from this big triangle, we subtract the small triangle, we'll get the remaining. From this triangle, we subtract this triangle, we'll get area of triangle AFD. A wonderful question, wonderful approach. We think of this triangle, area of this triangle is half into 72 into 100. This triangle, area of this triangle is half into 100 into 40. From this, we subtract this, we get this. So this is 3600 minus 2000, which is 1600. If you remember correctly, we said, we set out and said, look, let's find this altitude. It is not easy to find that altitude FB. So we say, look, probably finding the altitude is tougher. So I'm going to skip that and see if there's an alternate method. What is the alternate method? Construct an imagined area of triangle FAD as area of triangle ADC minus area of triangle FDC. Triangle ADC minus triangle FDC. This area minus this area equal to area of triangle FAD. The moment we imagine this like this, this question becomes far simpler. Right? So there are multiple other methods of doing this question. The other method is we want to find FP, draw this line, FN. FP is same as ND. This is a rectangle. PFND is a rectangle. So we want to find this. We find this, we are through. We want to find this. We find this, we are through. We find CN, we can find ND, 100 minus, that is ND. How do we find CN? Triangle CFN is similar to triangle CAD. So if we find CF by CA, we can find CN by CD. These two triangles are similar. CF by CA, if you know this by this, we can find that. How do we find this by this? These two angles are equal, alternate integer These two angles are equal, alternate integer angles. So AFE is similar to CFD, ratio 4 is to 5. We've already seen that. This is 4, this is 5. So CF by CA is 5 by 9. CN by CD will also be 5 by 9. Once you know that, you can find CN, we can find ND, ND is same as FP, then you can find area of triangle AFD. A slightly more roundabout method, but definitely still doable nevertheless. 
it's a wonderful question good proper high quality tricky question if you've not gotten it right the first time around spend some time get it right take your time nail this question don't don't rush through wonderful questions like this okay. i'm going to go to the next piece of theory ortho center centroid and all that i'm going to define a bunch of terms from in any triangle you can draw a line which is from one vertex perpendicular to the opposite side that is called an altitude and this is an altitude in any triangle from a vertex to the opposite side you can draw a line perpendicular that's called the altitude in any triangle there are three altitudes the three altitudes are concurrent or they meet at one point they go through one single point that meeting point is called as ortho center altitudes meet at ortho center altitudes are sometimes also called as orthogonals orthogonals meet at ortho center and wonderful next up in any triangle you can draw a line from one vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side that's called a median so from a to midpoint of bc meet b to midpoint of ac c to midpoint of ab we can draw three medians the three medians are concurrent again they meet at a point called as centroid ortho center is denoted by usually by h centroid by g altitudes meet at ortho center medians meet at centroid right there's an additional interesting wonderful property about medians the centroid divides each median in the ratio 2 is to 1 and then meet with that you have ag and gd bg and ge cg and gf ag by gd is 2 by 1 bg by ge is 2 by 1 cg by gf is 2 by 1 centroid divides each median in the ratio 2 is to 1 and so ortho center is meeting point of altitudes centroid is meeting point of medians circumcenter we have three perpendicular bisectors and perpendicular means at 90 degrees at right angles bisector is cutting into two equal parts all three sides of the triangle can have perpendicular bisectors so draw a line perpendicular passing through the midpoint that will be called a perpendicular bisector the three perpendicular bisectors are concurrent they meet at what is called as a circumcenter now with the circumcenter as center we can draw a circle that goes around the triangle or circumscribes the triangle this circle is called as circumcircle the radius of this circle is called as circumradius denoted by capital r perpendicular bisectors meeting point is circumcenter with circumcenter as center we can draw a circle that just circumscribes the triangle that circle is called a circumcircle the radius of that circle is called a circumradius circumcenter circumcircle circumradius next one the three angle bisectors from the vertex of a triangle we draw a line bisecting the angle is called an angle bisector the three angle bisectors are concurrent they meet at one point it's called the in center angle bisectors meet at in center with the in center as center you can draw a circle that is just inside the triangle or draw a circle in such a way the three sides of the triangle are tangents to the circle that circle is called the in circle and radius of that circle is called as in radius denoted by small r so we have circumcenter circumcircle circumradius in center in circle in radius okay. i'm going to go over this again meeting point of altitudes is ortho center meeting point of medians is centroid meeting point of perpendicular bisectors is circumcenter meeting point of angle bisectors is in center and so 
with circumcenter we have circumcircle circumradius with in center we have in circle in radius right. and centroid divides each median in the ratio 2 is to 1 remember the altitude median and angle bisector all of them start from a vertex altitude is from here perpendicular to the opposite side median is from here bisecting the opposite side angle bisector bisects the angle the perpendicular bisector has nothing to do with the vertex it is perpendicular bisector of a side if you extend the perpendicular bisector it need not pass through the opposite vertex it could for some triangles but it need not fine so perpendicular bisector has nothing to do with the vertex it has everything to do only with the side of a triangle remember that right in center in circle in radius circum center circum circle circum radius Quick, quick quiz, spot quiz. In center is meeting point of angle bisectors. Centroid is meeting point of medians. Meeting point of altitude is called as orthocenter. Meeting point of perpendicular bisectors is called as circumcenter. We're going to move on to a question. We're going to worry about this extensively for this wonderful triangle which is the equilateral triangle. I'm going to say, what do we know about equilateral triangle? How do we find all these different points for an equilateral triangle? So let's start with a wonderful equilateral triangle. And then draw AD perpendicular to BC. Equilateral triangle, all three sides measure A. So BD and DC, which will be greater? Think about this, will BD be greater or DC be greater? They'll obviously be equal. Why so? Think about that is very important to establish everything in geometry. I mean, all of geometry was started and built with five axioms and, and four postulates and few theorems. Completely started from scratch. Every subsequent theorem is established based on the few postulates and axioms and the theorems that have gone by before that. And so, so prove everything. Why should BD be equal to DC? This is a right angle. These two sides are equal. This is a common side. So the two triangles are congruent. Therefore, these two sides are equal. Therefore, this will be A by 2. This will be A by 2. A very vital point here. So this line AD, which we drew to be the altitude, also happens to be the median. Because AD bisects BC. D is the midpoint of BC. Now, wonderfully enough, this is also the angle bisector. These two angles are equal. This is also the perpendicular bisector of BC. AD passes through the midpoint of BC and is perpendicular to BC. Or AD is the perpendicular bisector of BC. AD is the altitude, AD is the median, AD is also the angle bisector. And so wonderfully, this line AD is all four. Altitude, median, perpendicular bisector and angle bisector. Everything. And so, so because it's everything, let's find how much it measures. How do we do that? We take the right angle triangle and then apply our famous theorem. This is A by 2. This is A. So AD square plus DC square equals AC square. AD square plus A by 2 whole square is A square. A D square is A square minus A square by 4 or 3 by 4 A square or A D is root 3 by 2 times A. And so we've drawn the altitude. The altitude happens to be the median. Altitude happens to be the angle bisector. Altitude happens to be the perpendicular bisector. Now we find the length of this altitude using Pythagoras theorem. And we figure out that that happens to be root 3 by 2a. Wonderful. So what do we do with this? The altitude measures root 3 by 2a. The median also measures root 3 by 2a. We can find area of this triangle. Area is half into base into height or half into a into root 3 by 2a or root 3 by 4 times a square. So for an equal triangle of side a, we know altitude, median and area. And wonderful. Now let's build on this. Now we have found that from one vertex we draw the altitude 
that will happen to be median angle bisector and perpendicular bisector. Now, if you draw an altitude from another vertex, that will also happen to be median altitude, angle bisector and perpendicular bisector. So, this one line AD is all four, median altitude, angle bisector, perpendicular bisector. BE is also all four, CF is also all four. All three of them will meet at one point. That one point can be thought of as meeting point of altitudes or meeting point of medians or meeting point of angle bisectors or meeting point of perpendicular bisectors or in an equilateral triangle, the orthocenter, centroid, in center and circumcenter are coincident. The same point is all four, in center, circumcenter, orthocenter and centroid. Right. Just a quick recap, meeting point of altitudes that is called as I'm going to drill this in. Meeting point of altitude is orthocenter. Meeting point of medians is centroid. Meeting point of angle bisectors is in center. Meeting point of perpendicular bisectors is circumcenter. Right. Super. Let's build on this. So we have found this. And so we want to imagine this as a medians meeting point or G is a centroid. So we found AD equal to root 3 by 2 times A. Can we find AG? Can we find GD? What do we know about centroid and median? Centroid divides median in the ratio 2 is to 1. AG by GD is 2 by 1. Or AG is 2 thirds of AD. GD is 1 third of AD. So AG is 2 by 3 of root 3 by 2A. Just A by root 3. GD is one third of root 3 by 2A, which is A by 2 root 3. Why are we doing this? What do we get by finding AG and GD? AG is A by root 3, GD is A by 2 root 3. Now remember, this G is not just a centroid, it is also the circumcenter. Or if you draw a circle around this triangle, it will be centered G or AG is a circumradius or for an equal triangle, circumradius is A by root 3. GD, G is also the in center. So if you draw a circle inside, its radius will measure A by 2 root 3 or in radius is A by 2 root 3. So for any equal triangle, of side A, you can find altitude, median, area, perimeter, in radius, circum radius. And so you should know all of these formulae, should know how to derive that, should know how to construct it, complete it using Pythagoras theorem, find the altitude, then use 2 is to 1, find circum radius, in radius. The entire derivation you should know, but you should also just know at the top of your head, circum radius, A by root 3, in radius, A by 2 root 3, area, root 3 by 4, A square, perimeter, 3A. Altitude root 3a by 2, median root 3a by 2. Somebody wakes you up at middle of the night at 2 a.m. and they ask you this, you should be able to pop out an answer. Equal triangle, an eternal examiner's favorite, you should know everything about it. Quick recap meeting point of medians, centroid. Meeting point of altitudes, orthocenter. Angle bisectors, in center. Perpendicular bisectors, circumcenter. Circumcenter, circumcircle, circumradius, in center, in circle, in radius, centroid divides median in the ratio 2 is to 1. To this, we have done this whole shebang with an equal triangle. We want to do the whole idea with a right angle triangle, the special case triangles, wonderful triangles. So, we are going to try to do that as well. Let's consider triangle ABC right angle that B. And so, we want to find a bunch of ideas with this. Before that, centroid is a meeting point of medians, orthocenter is a meeting point of altitudes, circumcenter is a meeting point of perpendicular bisectors, in center is a meeting point of angle bisectors, centroid is a meeting point of medians. Wonderful. So we have this fabulous triangle. Let's say we want to find orthocenter of this triangle. Orthocenter is meeting point of altitudes. 
So we need to have an altitude from A to BC, B to AC, C to AB, and then imagine where they could meet. Think about this, take a few seconds, draw the altitude from A to BC, actually draw the diagram. Then B to AC, C to AB. Right. You think about this, the altitude from A to BC is just AB. C to AB is just CB. B to AC is here. Or this point B is the orthocenter of the triangle. In any right angle triangle ABC, orthocenter is the vertex containing the right angle. Right angle triangle ABC with right angle at B, orthocenter is the vertex containing the right angle. And wonderful. Let's tweak this further we found ortho center now let's draw a circle around this triangle right? now this is a beautiful circle and therefore this is a chord of a circle bc is a chord of a circle ab is a chord of a circle ac is a chord of a circle now this ac is a very interesting card it is a card that makes a 90 degree angle on the circle. What does that mean? That means AC is the diameter of the circle. Fabulous. AC is the diameter of the circle. Where would be the center of the circle? AC is the diameter. Center should lie on the diameter. Not just that. It should be bang on the midpoint. So the midpoint of AC it's the center of the circle. It's the center of a circle going around this triangle ABC. A circle that goes around the triangle. What circle is that? Or what do you call that? The circumcircle. Or O is the center of the circumcircle. Or O is a circumcenter. Or in any right angle triangle, the circumcenter will be midpoint of hypotenuse. In any right triangle, Circumcenter is going to be midpoint of hypotenuse. This is circumcenter. This is circumradius. This is circumradius. Or two times circumradius is hypotenuse. Or circumradius is half of hypotenuse. In any right angle triangle, orthocenter is a vertex containing the right angle. Circumcenter is the midpoint of hypotenuse. Circumradius is half of hypotenuse. Fabulous. So we found circumcenter and orthocenter. Now let's imagine this line BO. From O, we have OA and OC, both are circumradius. OB will also be circumradius. And so I'm going to construct this line BO in many ways. Very vital to know this. BO is circumradius. That we know. BO is half of hypotenuse. That we know. These two parts are simple. BO is circumradius, which is nothing but half of hypotenuse. We've got that. Think about this. BO is also the line joining the orthocenter and circumcenter of this triangle. So I can think of BO like that. Finally, BO is a line from one vertex to midpoint of the opposite side. A line from vertex to midpoint of opposite side that is called median. So this line BO can be called as circumradius, can be called as half of hypotenuse, can be called the line joining orthocenter and circumcenter, can be called as median to the hypotenuse. Why are we discussing it like this? You could be given a question where say sides of a triangle are 6, 8, 10. Find the distance between orthocenter and circumcenter of this triangle. It seems like a vague, tough question. 6, 8, 10, some triangle. We not only have to find the circumcenter and orthocenter, we need to find the distance between orthocenter and circumcenter. But this is an absolute sitter. Because you know 6, 8, 10 is a right triangle. It is 3, 4, 5 into 2. The distance between orthocenter and circumcenter in a right triangle is nothing but a circumradius, which is nothing but half of hypotenuse. Or the distance between orthocenter and circumcenter is 10 by 2. Is fine. Done. So if you can identify a triangle as a right triangle, you are walking away with a bunch of these questions. And so, so you could be given a question which says, I have a triangle measuring 
which sides, let's say 5, 12, 13. What is the length of the median to the longest side? The right angle triangle. Longest side is the hypotenuse. I want to find the length of the median to the hypotenuse. Median to the hypotenuse, nothing but circumradius, which is nothing but half of hypotenuse, half of 13, 6.5, done. <coughs> so if you know your right angle triangles, if you know the standard Pythagorean triplets, then you are walking away with a bunch of these questions. They're just piece of cake. When you could be told a triangle measuring sides 7, 24, 25. What is the circumradius of this triangle? 25 by 2, 12.5. Triangle with sides 8, 15, 17. <coughs> Excuse me. What is the distance between ortho center and circum center? Which is nothing but circum radius, which is nothing but half of hypotenuse, 17 by 2. So the standard Pythagorean triplets, you should know them. 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, 9, 40, 41, 8, 15, 17. These are standard Pythagorean triplets. These are right angle triangles. You should know them. So square the sides, square the hypotenuse, add them up, see it that it reconciles, verify this. 3 square plus 4 square is 5 square. 5 square plus 12 square is 13 square. 7 square plus 24 square is 25 square. 9 square plus 40 square is 41 square. 8 square plus 15 square is 17 square. So you should just know these Pythagorean triplets, the right angle triangles. <coughs> because if you pick that it's a right angle triangle, just walking away with a bunch of answers. And so we should pick a right angle triangle from a kilometer away. And so please definitely remember these, commit these to memory. Because if you find a right triangle, you're just walking away with the answers. And try the next one. Sides of a triangle measure 9, 40, and 41. Three sides of a triangle 9, 40, 41, right angle triangle. Straight away, you should have a, a green signals firing away in your head. Saying we have a right triangle here. Then, what is the measure of the line segment that joins ortho center and circum center? The ortho center is the vertex containing the right angle. Circum center is midpoint of hypotenuse. Circum center is this. This is circum radius. This is circum radius. This is circum radius. Line joining ortho center to circum center is nothing but circum radius which is nothing but half of hypotenuse, half into 41, 20.5. You should be reading this question, figuring out the whole thing, telling it away in your mind and answering it in about 30, 40 seconds. Okay. Next one. Try this one. In a triangle ABC, whose sides measure 10, 10 and square root of 200 with BC as the longest side, what is the measure of angle BOC? where O is the ortho center of the triangle. 10, 10 root 200, BC is the longest side. And think about this, again a wonderful question. 10, 10 root 200, it should be, should be, should have, again you should be looking at this triangle and saying, oh I know this is a very nice friend of mine. I know everything about this triangle. Oh, this is fabulous, 10, 10 root 200. Oh, why, why root 200, why 10, 10? 10 square plus 10 square is root 200 square. This is a right angle triangle. It's an isosceles right angle triangle. BC is the longest side or BC is the hypotenuse. A is the right angle vertex. What is the measure of angle BOC where O is the ortho center of this triangle? In any right angle triangle, ortho center is the vertex containing the right angle or this is the ortho center. What is angle BOC? BOC is nothing but BAC, which is 90, done and dusted in 45 seconds. 
So you should know everything about equilateral triangle. You should know everything about right angle triangle. If you know this, then you're you're, you're probably 40% through cracking triangles. Fine. So everything you should know about this. Right? Again, a quick recap. Equilateral triangle of side A, altitude root 3a by 2, median root 3a by 2, area root 3 by 4 a square, perimeter 3a, circumradius a by root 3, in radius a by 2 root 3. Right angle triangle, ortho center is the vertex containing the right angle. Circum center is midpoint of hypotenuse. Circum radius is half of hypotenuse. The line joining the ortho center and circum center is also the circum radius, which happens to be half of hypotenuse, which is also median to the hypotenuse. If you know these points, you know how how they hold good, how do you derive this, what do you know about this, how, how are they all linked together, that part you should know. But even leaving that part out, you should just know the funda, you should know further the deriving part, you should just know each of these, your a by root threes and a by two root threes, you should stay on top of that. And if you know equal triangles and right triangles, it's yeah, they're, they're your good friends, then you're halfway there to cracking this exam. I'm gonna stop right about now. So, so geometry is a wonderful topic. Don't listen to anyone who says it's a tough topic or it is it is too time consuming or it is difficult or you have to learn it. You keep forgetting it. Learn from first principles, learn from absolute basics, learn why congruence holds good, learn why congruence can be done only in those only by linking back to those four ideas. HSS, SAS, ASA, and RHS. Understand why you should, you should worry about whether the angle is an included angle. Think about similarity, similarity equation. Learn from absolute basics. Don't skip them. Learn the proofs of these theorems. They will come of use. So don't don't gloss over proofs. And so, uh, but if you learn the right way, then geometry can be learned ridiculously quickly. In five to six hours, you can learn the basics of geometry. You do 40, 50 questions, it'll all fall in place. After that, you need to do hundreds of questions to be able to uh, do things quicker, smarter, sweeter, all of that. But the, but the funda part can be cracked in, in five to six hours if you do it the right way. Don't bypass funda and learn from obscure formulae. It is worthless and frequently counterproductive. Best wishes, guys. Hopefully, we'll catch back in about a week's time to discuss some other topic. Uh, geometry is a fabulous topic. Do check out uh, geometry on the course. Just It is available for free. Um, check out online.2im.com. You can sign in as a trial user and see a bunch of sessions there without paying a dime. Do check that out. We also have a, a wonderful offer for 20% off running right now uh, till July 2nd. So if you find the course useful, jump in and buy it because it's a good time to buy. It. There's a discount running. Uh, and uh, there is a sweet window of about five months to prepare and crack this exam. In. That is definitely sufficient. Don't listen to anyone who says otherwise. So you can start today, learn from basics, not be rushed and preparing in a frenzy, and crack the hell out of this exam. So keep that in mind. Don't 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 uh, don't think that there isn't enough time. Best wishes.